I was raised uh, in Arkansas, farming country, and of course I always wanted to be a cowboy from watching Roy Rogers on movies and listening to him on the radio and whatever. But uh, grew up a farmer, cotton farmer, but always wanted to be a cowboy. And uh, so I went through this little school, didn't do very good in school, but I managed to get out of high school. And then I wanted a cowboy, and uh, so I went to Ozark Mountains and cowboyed some. I went to Fort Pierce, South Dakota and cowboyed for a couple of years. I Texas cowboyed some, and I cowboyed a lot in Mississippi. So I've had, a, had my go round on, uh, on cowboy. And In 1978, 1979, along in there, I was working for Raymond Havard over in Lufkin. In one of those years, and I don't remember which year it was, well, Raymond decided to have a production sale. <clears throat> he said, I got a no boy from Mississippi coming over here going to do this sale for us. And Ben Emerson. But what amazed me about him so much was every day around there, he wasn't just in there in the office working on sales stuff. He would come to that barn four or five times a day and he would talk to every one of us just like we were just as important as anybody that was involved in that thing. And I just remember that warmness and 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 caring feeling it, that he made you feel so important as part of the process. And then over the years, uh, through the 80s, he helped me a lot with getting to work the ring. I'd always work for him at uh, sales when he when they were local or He'd come out here and do sales. Back then, things were so much different, and there were a lot of horse sales that went on. And Ben was the man to call, and always has been since. He 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 was always the man to call when it come to horse sales. In 1999, 20 years ago, at this specific host fraternity, I'll never forget. Ben and I were both out there. I was walking by, and he hollered at me, "Come over there! Come over here!" And <clears throat> I went over there, he said, I got an idea. I said, okay, what you got? He said, what would you think about us teaming up together, forming our sale company? I said, well, I never really thought about it, Ben. And he said, I think we could do the customers a lot better job if we were together. We got home and I talked to Mary. She said, I think it'd be a great idea. So we had a meeting with he and Jan. We made an agreement. We all shook hands. And that was the end of that. And it was a done deal. And then we formed Western Bloodstock. And I'm going to tell you that I had more fun with that guy. We formed Western Bloodstock 19 years ago, and I have had more fun with that guy in the last 19 years and admired him so much. It came time both of us were getting a little older and think about changing professions. Ben had the insurance company. I had some more stuff I wanted to do, and... And Ben said, uh, say I had somebody hit me up the other day about buying Western Bloodstock. What do you think? Who was it? He said, Jeremy Barwick. I said, uh, you think he can uh, run this? He said, I'll make sure he can. He said, I, I, won't, I can assure you I won't let him fail. Ben, would, ben followed him every step he made for the first two or three years in Western Bloodstock. He made sure he succeeded. And... He loved Jeremy like a son. He did. He he loved that man so much, and he told me that. He said that's just. He said that's. He said I've got one son, one biological son, Mike. But he said Jeremy's just like my son. We had been to sales, and especially over there in John Justin, when you come in that door over there on the right, where the horse on, on my right, if I'm in the auction block, where the horses come in, Ben always stood right over there, and we called we we called it the hell hole. Is what we called it. And I said, Ben, why don't you come up here and sit down? He said, I don't want to because every person that's selling a horse comes through that door and I want to be available to every one of those people. And he was. It didn't matter if you were selling a $1,500 horse or a $150,000 horse. He was going to treat you just like you were to equal. And he wanted to be there available to those people to give them the personal service that he knew he would want. 
And he preached that to me all those years, and I learned a lot from him about that. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say other than Ben is just a... Ben, I love you, buddy. I'm going to miss you, but I promise you. I'm going to let you down, and I'm going to make sure Jeremy keeps doing what you want him to do. You can bet on that. Well, what an honor it is today to get to be a part of honoring a great man named Ben Emerson. Uh, ben and I don't go as far back as some of y'all because I hadn't been around as long as some of y'all. But uh, Ben Emerson was one of those guys when I was an old kid up there in Oklahoma and I was wanting to be a horse sale auctioneer of some kind. Uh, never even fathoming the idea of being in Fort Worth or doing anything with the NCHA at that time. Ben Emerson was one of those guys that his name was on everything. In the cutting horse world, he's he's having horse sales and in, in Augusta and here, there, and yonder, and uh, just had that way about him. And you just so the first time I met Ben Emerson, uh, as it was you know just like meeting a guy that you had a poster of him in your bedroom, you know. And so uh, you know later on down the road, as life would have it, I go to work for Western Bloodstock, and Ben Emerson and I become friends. And man, what a good friend! What a good example. What a good guy to be around. I've, I've been blessed in my little career to be around some really good guys. And Ben Emerson was one of those guys. He's one of those guys that would find the best in people. Fabulous to find the best in the horse. I don't care how sorry your horse is. There's something good about him and Ben Emerson find it. And, uh, and just handle things. Just calm. And no drama. Uh, just tell the truth. Be nice. Just be yourself. I never, the time I've known Ben Emerson, he was never anybody but Ben Emerson. He didn't put on airs. He didn't try to be somebody he wasn't. Uh, just a good guy. He cared when you walked in that door. He cared whether you got along or you didn't get along. And he wanted to make sure you got along before he got along. And uh, but what, what really tickled me about him, watching him around there from time to time, you know, there's some days in this business where we don't do so good. <laughs> and people know sale horses and Ben's down there kind of handling things. You you could you could miss on somebody's horse. And they'd actually apologize to Ben for not selling their horse. Uh, they just you know, they he just lets you know that you're in this together and they almost felt bad for Ben because they didn't get their horse sold and but I tell you what was the best thing was the friendship. We uh we we got to be friends. We'd talk on the phone a good bit. And uh we didn't talk about horse sales very much. Uh, we got to go off campus and do a horse sale in in uh, Abilene every year at the Western Heritage. Oh Ben, he just get fired up. He's out there with them ranch cowboys, you know, when they're slapping their shaps and, and he just he he loved it. He was just a good guy to 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 have for a friend talk about life and life in general. Uh, most most everybody knows if you want to talk about politics with Ben Emerson, you get ready to listen. <laughs> he uh, It'd be just short to say he had a slight opinion about things. But, but you know, in that, it, it wasn't just about politics. It was about a man who loved his country. We talked about love of country. Not just love of cutting horses and cutting horse people or ranch horse people or he loved being an American. That to me that was important to me and I like talking to people like that and I think it's honorable to talk about that today. Uh, one of the biggest events that Ben and I actually was a kind of it was his project, but I got to be the auctioneer every time, was we'd sell breedings for uh horsemen for Christ. was easier than to pick up and so we'd uh he'd get them breedings all together Joe Howard would come down there and it was a big deal on that day because we prayed before the sale and we'd sell them breedings on Thursday morning it was just a given that I was going to be the auctioneer and I got to do it and Ben and I did it together and we loved doing it it was all going for a good thing but man that led for a lot of good conversations we talked about our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We we talked just like 
men talking. And so when you can sit down and visit with a guy about the things that really matter to you, he's a friend. And so uh, today I'm honored to call Ben Empson my friend. Ben Empson loved his work. He really enjoyed what he does. There's people that do a lot of things for the money. Ben Emerson did it because he loved horses. And more than that, he loved people. And he really loved the people that loved the horses. Ecclesiastes 3 says there's a time for everything. That includes living and dying. After that, it says that it's a gift of God that a man would enjoy his work and plumb up till July of 2019. Ben Emerson enjoyed his work and he was in that chair right there in the Coliseum doing his thing. And so uh, I'm honored to call him my friend. Blessed to honor him today. Well, folks, I guess you'd have to count on your fingers and toes the number of years that Ben and I go back uh, late 60s. Uh, I think he was working for Dr. Thagger there in Mississippi, and when you meet Ben, you you don't hardly forget him. And over the years, uh, I've had the privilege of serving on many different committees and both past presidents of our association. And I was always real confident in counseling with Ben on any issues, even later years. Uh, uh, how fair-minded he was, uh, uh, rich or poor, he was uh, the kind of a guy that you could kind of take stock in his opinion and uh, always shot uh, very straight with whatever issue arose. Talk about shooting straight. I was going through the exhibit hall one time and um, Ben hollered at me and he wrote a book called Shoot True, and uh, he called me over there and got something I want to give you. He gave me that book and wrote a few things in the front of it, and I took it and got back to the pickup. I put it on the dash, and Mary Jo was with me, and she said, uh, what's that? And I said, uh, Ben wrote a book, and uh, Shoot True, I said, what a... Must be a biography, because <laughs> that was Ben, shoot true. And uh, so she opened it up and read the introduction, and it happened to be a um, fiction, <laughs> but what a perfect title for a biography, you know? And uh, you talk about a guy talented. Businessman, musician, auctioneer. How many capacities could we, can you say about that guy? No, I've enjoyed Ben and always uh, found for him to be uh, for the right thing and, and uh, uh, have really uh, cherished the relationship we've had over the, gosh, I guess close to 45 years. And uh, Mary Jo and I can't attend today uh, due to earlier commitments, but uh, I wish the family the best and, and all my friends, and we love you. Uh, I really don't even know where to start. It's been three really, really long days. Uh, the, he was like my father. He was, he was a second dad to me. You know, we all, we all know his accomplishments. I mean, what he did in the business world was phenomenal. But more of the kind of person he was. He was as genuine and sincere, giving person anyone would ever meet. Um, you know, at the sales, it wouldn't matter if you were there to buy or sell a $2,000 horse or half a million dollar horse. He treated you the same. You know, when I was just a kid, I met Ben when I was 16. 
And I still lived in Georgia at the time. And when I would come out to Texas, I didn't really know anyone. And before I even really knew Ben, I just called him on the phone. And at that time, I was riding some two-year-olds, and that was probably I was probably 18 or 19 at that time. And at that time was when you still had to bring the two-year-olds out before the fraternity for the screening. And so I just called Ben up to try to find somewhere to stay, you know, for a day or two to get ready for that. And he said, just come to my place. So that's that's what I did, and he had cattle there for me, and, and we worked horses together and just... Just a phenomenal, phenomenal person. Um, not many people would do that. <laughs> you know, we just kind of built a bond over the time, and, and we talked on a regular basis, and then I mean, the last seven, eight years, probably talked every day multiple times a day a lot and spent a, a lot of time in the truck together talking about a lot of things and and he helped me with with more than obviously he gave me the opportunity him and milk to to buy western bloodstock but also even with the breeding facility we have you know, we started out, we were real small. Um, and Ben introduced me to Don Horton, that owns Dual Smart Ray. And basically put that deal together for me to get that horse to stand, which now looking back is was the beginning of what Brazos Valley Stadium Station is now. And Ben had a lot to do with that. Um, he talked to me through a lot of, a lot of issues, a lot of problems. We could talk about anything, and, and I knew that our conversation went nowhere but between me and him. And never judged you if you made a bad decision. He'd never judge you on it. You know, he would, he would talk to you and help you work through it. But there was no judgment. You know, any anytime someone asked him to do any kind of charity auction, no was not an answer. I mean, it was simply yes, and... You would never pay him for anything. He wouldn't take it. He would do, he helped, I don't know how many trainers that he helped get started um, that came there to his place, started there at his place, and then he either helped them get better jobs or helped them find a place to get going on their own. And I know I've just had a, a lot of phone calls from people like that that were so appreciative. And I don't know that that you would find anyone to say a bad thing about Ben. And I know all the time we spent together, we spent lots of time in the truck together, going around looking at horses. And never once did he say a bad word about anyone. Everything was very positive. <laughs> That's just the guy he is. You know, he was... He was one of my very best friends. It's going to be really hard, you know, at the sales going forward, because, you know, just even this fall, looking at colts and stuff, I, if I if he wasn't with me and I had a question on him, I could call him and, and he would talk me through it. And and at the sales, I mean, it's, it's going to be hard. <laughs> Not having him there, you know, he, he sat in the same spot, every sale, all day long. First horse to last horse, never left early. Never even took a bathroom break hardly. I and mean, he was he was there the entire time. Whew. I could talk about Ben forever, you know, but he was probably the best person I've ever met. Uh -huh. I hope that don't miss him. You know, we can we can sit around and talk about all the different accomplishments that Ben has done in his life, whether it be horse training, selling horses as an auctioneer or as a sale manager. But I think that Ben would rather be remembered for the kind of person he was and the impact that he had on people. You know, some people just have 
a presence and an air about them that when they're in a room, everyone wants to meet them and talk to them. And that was Ben. He, he wanted to have an impact on me. And I think more than any other accomplishment, he got that done. I, I know for me, just being around him, learning different things from him, and I'm very lucky and honored to have had Ben in my life. And he did, he taught me a lot. But probably the biggest thing he taught me was how to be a better person. And, and I think that's the way Ben would want me to remember. I'm fine. I'm way better off than y'all are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> All right. Maybe okay. just a couple of funny if things. You can get the I think just, yeah. Huh? yeah. yeah. I got one, and but milk's going under the bus, but. <laughs> it's okay. But, 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 but Ben will be honored, and somebody's got to go under now, see, the bus. See, you should be filming that, right? That's perfect. I am. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do a countdown uh, on this one. Okay. Yeah. Just, you yeah. know, you know. Well, he knows. Now he knows, but that pressure cooker we work in for seven, eight days down there doing our thing and some people handle pressure better than other people. I won't mention anybody's name. I know one thing, I know after Milk sold that thing to Jeremy, me and Milk can finally be friends. He, uh, <laughs> but in all those days of doing good, doing bad, doing medium, whatever, Ben Emerson never chewed me out. Now if you wanted to butt chewing off of Milk, they're a nickel apiece. <laughs> but you couldn't write a check big enough to get a butt chewing off Ben Emerson. Is Some of those did come from him, but he'd be down there and say, Go tell old Steve, uh, slow down, little bit. Uh, we're going too fast here. I got to get, go up there, and I wouldn't say Steve said, or Ben said, slow down. I said, Son, you need to slow down. You're going too fast. Or you need to speed up, or whatever. Well, he's the one that Ben's over there in that hole. He's the one told me. I never heard Ben's voice tell me anything negative. I'll just put it no, that he way. Knew there was no negative no, in Ben Emerson. No. It was all positive. I well, can't say that for all of them. But <laughs> <I've been. laughs> he was a he was a great great partner and a great great friend, and I, I did. I loved him. I mean, he was. I'm gonna miss him. He was the very best coming up with nicknames for people. <laughs> he had a nickname, and they were private. Now I'm gonna tell you, they were tri private between me and him. But he had a nickname for pretty much everybody. Anybody that, that worked there or was closely affiliated with us or our friends and acquaintances, he was pretty good at putting a nickname on them, kind of analyzing that from their personality and how they behaved. He, he was good at those nicknames. I, I was telling Steve while ago, and I don't know if you, if you know about this or not, but uh, oh, several years ago when we were, we were going around looking at all the Gailey yearlings, and we had been gone six or seven days. And Center Ranch was our last stop, and it was probably seven o'clock at night. We we're driving back, and we stopped one of those little old stores there on seven. It's supposed to cross road in the store, and fuel pumps was right there close. Well, we got out to get something to drink, and uh, Ben, hit, I'm notorious for not taking keys out of my truck. I leave them in there all the time, and Ben hit the lock when he got out, and so we get back to the truck, and he says, "Gentlemen, what the hell are we gonna do?" I said, I don't know, I guess we'll try to find a locksmith. So we go to calling, try and find, our, both our phones are in the truck. Neither one of us have our phones. And the truck's running, the door locked. And the closest locksmith was about an hour and a half away. So we're going around there and we're like, what are we going to do? So I just, I climbed in the back of the truck. And I'm looking around, what the hell am I going to do? Well, I just took the ball out of my truck. And I just hit that back window and busted the whole back window. I mean, there's glass all over the inside of this truck. Well, the funniest part, though, there's kind of a heavier lady pumping some fuel, an older lady pumping fuel right there. Well, when I hit that truck, it sounded like a damn shotgun. And she screamed and jumped. And he laughed his ass off all the way home. And we were actually just talking about that story there one day at the summer show. He was there. We got to talking about it. And... And the good old Floyd Moore said we did with a sort of stick in the alley. <laughs> yeah. And crazy things we've done over the years, but we we had a lot of fun with him. We're supposed to be keeping this upbeat, but I gotta bring this up now. My mother died two years ago, a little over two years ago. And we took her back to she lived here, but she lived in assisted living. Now Ben knew her if had met her a time two years ago and Jeremy didn't know her and and being and, and, and so anyway we took her back to Lufkin to Bear where we're from 
and we had a visitation that night before and the man I didn't expect I mean I, I didn't think I'd see anybody from here show up there but at that visitation that night before I looked up and in come Jeremy Barrett and Ben Emerson and I'm gonna tell you I lost it but that's just the kind of guy that Ben was and that's the kind of guy that that Jeremy was and and they drove all the way from Lufkin I from Weatherford to Lufkin which is four, four and a half hours, stayed 30 minutes or whatever, long enough to get me to stop crying, and then drove back. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was a trip that... To, that was the second that, time he walked Oh, the way. second time. <laughs> that was the second that time. That was the second time. <laughs> but that's just kind of guy he was. He was going to be sure he got down there, and I'm sure he called Jeremy and said, we need to go to Lufkin to this visitation. And that, that was just being. That was just, that was just him. And I, I tell you that there will be plenty of people that he is to, to repay the favor call. He had many a friend. Mm -hmm. He was the best. He was just, he, he, that's it, he was the best. He was the best. Yep. My friend Ben has had a great influence on in my life, and I will always be grateful to him. Nan and I decided to move to Weatherford while we were staying at his home. Ben and Jan were two of the most hospitable people we have ever met. As a matter of fact, Jan and Joanne helped us move from California, driving my old blazer here, pulling a trailer with two horses, two dogs, plus Nan, sick as a dog, in the back seat. Oh boy, so many Thanksgivings and parties to remember. Ben influenced and helped me as a cutter for the last 25 years. Ben was involved in the purchase and sale of every horse that I've owned since we have been here. His expertise has been invaluable. Ben was my friend, and Nan and I will never forget him. Rest in peace, my friend.